Pistons win total prediction. So, we all know, last season, we won a grand total of 14 games. King, how many games do you think the Pistons will win this year? What is our ceiling? I'm going from 30 to 35 wins each. Um, no, I need, a, I, need, I need a number. I need a solid number. <laughs> I'll go and say 33 wins. Okay. I'm going to go 33 wins. I'm gonna 33. Go right so like I said, last season, I scrapped. I totally scrapped out of my mind. Yeah, for sure. We talk about that all the time. Yep. Total different situation. Roster already makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I, I can easily see 33 uh, games for these guys, you know, just based off of the talent that we're continuing to acquire. Like I said, I still don't think we're done. The roster making so much more sense is just going to equate to wins, man. That's just what is it's going to happen. So yeah. 33 wins. That's what I'm at. Okay. Y'all heard him. Y'all heard him. He said 33. I'm going 35, bro. Okay. I'm going 35. I honestly think, I honestly think, bro, like for better or worse, the complete overhaul and turnover in the front office was the first and most important step to move forward, bro. I just felt like a change needed to be visibly seen in order for the team, the coaches, the players, the fans, everybody to move forward, to turn a page. You know what I mean? Like we talked about it at length, bro. Like just, just the whole context around Pistons conversations now are different. It's more like curiosity. We just talked about the roster. I mean, this time last year, we're nobody caring about, you know, ro the rotation, the starting lineup. Second, nobody really cared. But now it's like, okay, what's the start? We just talked about it for like a half hour. So it's like, it's more of, it's a curiosity now. You know what I mean? It's not like just hopeless how it used to be or just all negative. So I think the energy shift alone <laughs> is yeah. going to account for us getting more wins because guys are going to be more motivated. They're going to feel like it's a clean, like you always say, roll last season away. Yeah. I think those things, things needed to happen with the front office. All these different things, players coming in and out, the coach, those things needed to visibly happen in order for everybody to kind of throw it away. It was, it had to be more than just mentally, okay, we're moving on and we're changing. I think people needed to see a visible change. And I think that's a big reason as to why this team is going to play a little bit differently next year. Yeah, definitely the energy in the arena is going to be a lot uh, different. If, you know, we can we continue to uh, acquire new faces on this team. So it's, yeah. it's definitely refreshing for the fan base. And it's it's guys that, you know, make sense. Exactly. So, this roster. So that alone is going to change the atmosphere at Little Caesars Arena style. It's still not good enough for me to get season tickets again. <laughs> I was just about to we ask get <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we get there, you know. Um, oh, man, them refs about to be hitting you up heavy, bro. <laughs> you get, as soon as you hit a one-game winning streak, they're going to be like, we got an 81-game package. <laughs> I'll be on the buddy pass list again. <laughs> but, but, yeah, oh, it, man. it'll be a lot more fun at Little Caesars Arena. Um, and give some fans reasons to go and see the Pistons play, not just to go and see the opposite player on other teams. Right. <laughs> right. Or to hope that, you know, just having to hope that maybe this is that one to four chance we win the game. Yeah. Like, nah, we don't want that. I'm going to get to this, bro. I'm going to get to this in a minute as far as what I project for K, because that was something that was on my mind too. Um, but just continuing on about the win total. I know 35 might seem high. Um, but a lot of you guys, I saw some 36, 37, so uh, it may be for the same reasons, I think. I think, bro, a big part of why I say that is just because of the veterans that we've added to this team. I think them alone, they alone are going to account for some wins. Even if it's just helping our young core guys understand how to handle in-game situations. You know what I mean? There were so many games last season when you could just tell in crunch time, like they were trying to fall back on something to use in this situation, like maybe it was our college experience or the small NBA sample size that they have when the NBA is just different. Yeah. Like if we had these types of veterans that we have now on last year's roster, bro, yeah. that losing streak doesn't even hit double digits. Right. So because they would be able, because there were so many close games that we would just give away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think just that alone, you know, I'm happy that the Pistons are taking a page out of like the Rockets playbook right who added van fleet um dylan brooks uh jeff green those veterans to help their young guys i think that was important that they did that i think it's important that we're trying to do that as well because we got to have some type of balance yeah and you know just based off of i just think we can do really well in our conference alone you know yeah 
it's the Eastern Conference again. So I think we can do a, a lot better in our conference record. With those veterans, just like you said, man, it changes a lot. It's not just that we added veterans. We added veterans that know how to win. Right. <laughs> that will kill you at the end of a game. That will take that shot. You got a, a couple of options now. If K doesn't have the opportunity, he can pass the ball too and find opportunities to finish off games, man. You know, so these veterans, obviously, you know, they're used to playing against the top talent in this league. And we, we have some guys that's championship caliber. We got, you know, yeah. some guys that's been there. So that's huge. It is, man. I mean, you got those situations where, you know, maybe it's a tight game and Kay gets called for a foul that wasn't a foul. And he and he's barking, you know, at the ref because it's, it's, it's an important call. And Tobias is pulling to the side. Bro, chill. Don't worry about him. You know, let's, let's go. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Just keeping guys focused on the main thing when it's easy to get caught up in a, in a tight situation a high intense situation in the moment just having that vet there that's been there before to kind of just realign your thinking okay cool forget the ref whatever we're here let's go you know what I mean? that kind of thing i think that alone as a veteran is going to be key for us and then too but i just like i'm thinking about so many more things i might have to up my total as we go on because i'm thinking about more and more things i might factor into it right the coaching can't be worse than it was right Oh, you definitely gonna get some. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got, like, a, you got an angry coach that got fired. You know, I, we've heard the story, man, right? Man, what? With Dwayne Casey, but we, you got a coach this time that got fired when you know the the entire NBA world felt like that shouldn't have happened. You know, when when I seen it, I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah, because you were nothing before that man got there. Um, man. So, you know, you, he's definitely going to be motivated to to prove some things in this league. So that should, I mean, obviously that's going to be contagious. It's going to help everybody out. Um, if, if nothing, if nothing else, because I'm still getting to learn him, JB. One thing I know for sure about him that he has that current that Monty Williams does not a desire to coach on the NBA level. Right. If nothing else, I know that's the case. I'm not throwing shade, but we all know Monty didn't want to coach when he was here right not just this team but but anybody he didn't want to coach anybody last year so coaching the worst team in the league probably didn't help his motivation um but i don't think anybody will honestly say that they felt monty gave the pistons 100 percent when he was here nobody would say that right because it just wasn't the case but jb on the other hand bro he was just fired for advancing his team further than the previous year in, in back-to-back years you know what i mean but like before he got there they were terrible and they just got out of the second round for the first time since Brian left and he gets fired. So if anything, he brings that mentality that I want from my Detroit Pistons coach, fiery, hard nosed coach where players can grow with him and where he can connect with them. You know what I mean? Like if you ask me, that sounds a lot like a guy over there, you know, named Dan Campbell. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. But aside from the firing piece, it's a lot of similarities as far as what they demand from their players and what they expect from their players. Yeah, I, man, like I said, I, I can't wait to see what he does to this team. I, I think our backcourt is going to be very, very, very problematic. And it's, yeah. It's, it really are now because, like I say, he grows backcourts. Yep. Um, 100%. I think alone, you know, that that is going to help the Pistons win some games, man. I can't wait to watch this team, man. Yeah. There's so many questions that we need answered. I might go 40 by the end of the night. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna go, go. No, I'm gonna go 36. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay at 36. Okay, all right. 36. 36. That's my, that's my final answer. 36. The shooting, bro. We can't yeah. not talk about the shooting. This is the most properly constructed team we've seen around Kane since he's been in the Pistons uniform. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right? And okay. Most yeah. Important to say because we've had shooters. We have Boyan. We have Burks. But the team didn't make sense. He could average 10 assists this year, bro. He averaged seven point five with that roster. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I think I think he could average ten assists, bro. Because like all of a sudden he's got shooters everywhere now. Twenty five and ten assists. I was thinking because I think the best earlier asked if K could average thirty. He's not going to average thirty this year, but I can see twenty five and ten. Twenty four and ten. I don't think K is going to average thirty simply because of the type of player he is. Yeah, K, K passes the basketball too. Yeah, I think he's going to be twenty five to 27 points at the most uh, with a possibility of 10 10 assists man that's yeah. a legit thing because 
If you can do that through that hailstorm, man, come on. Man. Right, 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 right. That's and that's what I'm saying, bro. I think like as much as he's been maligned for not being able to get this team over the hump, all these different things that and I'm not saying he's absolved from any criticism, but it was just like the amount he was getting, I think a lot of people are gonna be eating their words this year, bro. Just based on the roster construction alone. Just based on how much easier the game was gonna be for him because he has a team that makes sense for him now. He's gonna have guys looking sick. Remember the play when, when LeBron, when not to bring him up, but the, when he hit, did the fake pass here and then he went this way and he just looked close to... I think K processes things like that. I think he processes the game, like how Luca processed the game. I think we're gonna see some plays where defenders are looking silly because they yeah. think they knew where he was going, but yeah. he but the, but they didn't and he's just and he's just like chuckling on his way back down the court. I'm just, I'm telling you, bro, like, I feel like this spacing is going to change everything for him, bro. Like, it's going to change everything. I just can't wait to see it. Like, I also think his turnover is going to come down, too. Because he's not going to be trying to force things that aren't there. You know what I mean? That's what happens often when you don't have any, any room to operate. Because you don't have any shooters. You try to force things on your own. That's, that's tough. And then, too, everything we're saying, bro, applies to Jaden, too. That's another reason why I want him to run the point when K sits down. Because we haven't seen what he can do either with this type of snipers around him either. Yeah. Yeah, but Ivy's just as much as important, obviously. Yeah. Uh, like I said, he's shown that he can, you know, can control the basketball and dish too. So, like I said, him being able to attack the basket and uh, we all know what type of worker he is. Mm -hmm. See what type of improvements, you know, comes out of this work this summer. Yep. I've been working on this jump shot, obviously. Um, yep. Everything's going to open up for him. Yep. I still have high hopes for Ivy, man. Man, what, bro? A lot of fans be trying to throw him in the uh, car. I'm not, bro. You Nowhere know? near, man. <laughs> what happened with him was not under you know, his control. It made no sense whatsoever. So I'm still high on Ivy. This, this is a better situation for them both. And I expect them to flourish. So that's why I was saying what I said earlier with Bickerstaff. I expect this backcourt yeah. to flourish. And look, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But we've said it for the last few weeks, bro. 68. 68 games. I know on paper it might look better with a... Sh I get it. I just want to make sure, and I'm sure they are, that they're looking at that long enough to say, okay, this is, oh, maybe not. Let's punt on this and switch this up a little bit. I right. just want to make sure that the due diligence is done because I, I do think that can I still do think that can work and I think that's the highest ceiling as far as your backcourt together on both sides of the ball and I just want to see it so we'll see but um yeah I'm not mad at this I can see that rise above I can see him 25 or nine dimes six rebounds I can see that 39 from three absolutely with the shooting that we have now we were one of the worst shooting teams in the league last year easily one of the worst constructed teams last year, easily. One of the worst coach teams last year, easily. And he still had seven and a half assists. <laughs> that is insane. I think it's going to be a fun season for him. I'm happy for Cade. I'm really, I'm happy for everybody, but I'm happy for Cade now because he has what he needs now. However we got here, I don't even care. I'm just glad that he has it now. We just said last week that even if he was playing under just league average conditions, how much better he would look to everybody on the outside. He's getting at this point, as far as the roster construction, he's getting at least league average now. Yeah, yeah, That's right. fair to say. And we still got a chance to go past that. Absolutely. They got some money, so. Absolutely, for sure. And when you knock me down, I'm getting back up. Cause when I step on the floor, you know your time's up. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I gotta face it. I got no time to waste it.